If you've played around with the ESP32 cam, you probably want to build your own hardware project for it. It's a pretty capable little device. Don't worry because it's really easy to get started. In this video, I'll be explaining the design of the prototype, how I did it, and the learnings I want to apply for a more product ready version. You might be wondering why I decided to build a PCB for this project, rather than to just use breadboards. I've replaced breadboards completely because they're just too finicky and you don't get to reuse much of the effort you put into them. But the biggest reason is form factor. Most of the time, a lot of the value of a project comes from its form factor. You just get so much integration for free from routing traces instead of jumper wires. So by putting the same amount of effort and arguably less into making a prototype PCB, I get to move towards an end solution faster. You just have to wait a few days from the sponsor of this video, Eisler. Thank you so much for sponsoring this PCB. They were manufactured and shipped from Germany for pretty competitive prices. Three copies for this two layer prototype cost $46 and it got to the US in one week. Also, as engineers, our minds get really excited and we easily commit to a lot of elegant solutions. A prototype is extremely valuable at anchoring a solution down in time. That way we can point to it and improve on it consistently. My goal here was to see if I could reliably power the ESP32 using a solar panel. This way I could deploy it in the field without having to worry about routing cables to it and whatnot. At a high level, I need an energy generation device. I'm convinced I'm going to be using solar. Then I need an energy storage device. For that, I'm convinced I'm using a simple lithium ion cell. I also need some way to connect that to the ESP32 cam because they'll go up in flames if you just plug them in directly. This prototype is all about buying down risk while proving out technology for the application. You probably already do this with physical modules. I used a few Adafruit modules to prove out the power electronics for this project. And ultimately what we're doing is trading off the chance to optimize our project now for learnings that are too hard to predict during integration. Let's look at the MPPT module for example. For this module, the charge current is configured to 24 milliamps, but we might want to raise that or lower that depending on the battery we pick. We can also do away with these massive JST connectors and condense down the layout, but we don't know we need those optimizations yet. I found a robust solar panel option with an ETFE coating, which will protect it from the elements. Honestly, I just went with the two watts one because I knew how to pre-soldered cable from the get-go. The solar panel we picked operated at seven volts. However, lithium ion cells require 4.2 volts constant voltage and some sort of constant current charging solution. So we must have some sort of switching device between the two. There are a handful of options on the market for 1S solutions, namely ST makes some good ones such as the SPV1040 and there's the LTC3108 from analog devices, but those cost a fortune. With this project context, I'm going for more consumer device rather than IoT industrial. So I looked on LCSC and found pretty much the only option in stock is CN3791 from Consonance. Although it advertises it has MPPT or maximum PowerPoint tracking, when you read the description, it's more like MPPC. In a nutshell, MPPT refers to an active algorithm that uses some sort of educated trial and error to find the operation point that maximizes the power in the solar panel IV curve. However, this chip's MPPC just operates at a hard-coded set point, which we choose using two resistors. Honestly, it's not that bad for only 50 cents. Now for the energy storage device, I went with an 18650 because I had it on hand and had no experience with how much a 3000 milliamp hour battery actually feels like for the ESP32. Stay tuned for learnings because I decided to use a different battery after building this prototype. Let's abstract away everything I just explained into the solar to battery energy flow. Now we have to worry about the lithium ion battery to the ESP32 cam energy flow. The battery voltage varies from 2.8 volts to 4.2 volts between its lowest and highest state of charge. We know the ESP32 cam operates on a steady 3.3 volts and draws less than 1 watt of power or 300 milliamps when operating, and we see peaks of up to 500 milliamps when the LED is flashed. These are significant enough to justify a buck converter. An LDO would waste about 270 milliwatts of power in the worst case scenario, and the cost of a buck converter isn't that much more, so the savings are essentially free. Although I separated part consideration and schematic design in the video, in reality, I find myself placing things in flux as the design is being fleshed out. It's a lot to keep track of at once, so it's really useful to have voltages and connections to find and track throughout the design process. Here, I use power nets and net labels to differentiate between power and signal connections, and I find myself selecting them frequently to verify which parts are connected, just like this. Let's go over adding modules. Because this is a prototype, I don't really need the 3D models. I'm just cloning 2.54mm pin headers and renaming their pinouts and designators to stand in for Adafruit module. In the footprint section, I add a silk line to define the outline of the board as if it were mounted vertically. 
And for these vertical pin headers I'm using, there's about a five millimeter offset between the center of the pin header and the center of the PCB. Also, we're not space constrained here, so give your module some personal space. The assembly process isn't very precise, so they're usually mounted slightly skewed. Then I rename them and publish them to my library so I can consume them in the parent project. If you want other people to be able to see this part too, feel free to change the permissions on the top right hand corner of Flux. Onto the layout part, this part is super fun and easy. Because a lot of the hard work is done for you, you only have to draw like 10 traces. The only thing to watch out for is the trace width for higher current nets. For example, the trace from the battery to the LDO. Use this trace width calculator if you have specific temperature rise requirements or weird stack up, but we're not pulling more than 500 milliamps, so anything over 6 mils should be fine. To start a trace, you click on the routing touch points, and to end it, you press escape or end the trace at another routing touch point to complete the connection. Press F to change your elbow direction, and press W to cycle through your preferred trace widths. If you want to get fancy and configure your trace widths, check out the advanced routing section of this tutorial. Another tip is that you already have through holes for these modules, so go easy on the vias. See if you can route a trace on the bottom layer before right clicking and adding a via. If you're replicating parts of this project for your own, you can easily clone this project by going to the Flex menu and clicking Clone Project. If you need help along the way, check out this Getting Started in Flex tutorial series. I'm pretty excited to share the project learnings with you so you don't have to make the same mistakes as I did. As I was programming the ESP32 CAM, I realized I greatly overestimated how much battery I would need because in my application, I only need to snap a photo a few times a day and upload them to a server. Assuming this transaction takes about 10 seconds, we would be pulling approximately 3 milliwatt hours, which equates to approximately 0.8 milliamp hours at a nominal 3.7 volts. Depending on the sleep mode, we can get the power consumption as low as 2 milliamp hours a day. Of course, I might want to add some buffer while I'm developing the firmware and feature creep some other processes into the ESP, but it's nice to know that we can really optimize on the power consumption if needed. When I was measuring the solar panel under as much sunlight I could get, I measured the MPPC point of the module to be set to 5.5 volts, when in reality I wanted to be set to 7 volts. Now I know to look out for it when I designed the integrated version. Also, it's pretty difficult for me to measure the charging current of the solar cell. I did this by probing the RCS resistor on the CN3791. At 5.5 volts for the solar panel, I measured 10 millivolts on RCS, which equates to 2 milliamps into the battery. For future designs, I might want to add an op amp to buffer the signal into the ESP32 CAM's ADC so I can track solar performance throughout the day. And finally, as I was debugging another project, I realized that the i squared c pull-up resistors that the Adafruit modules come with are not sufficient enough, and I need to add my own lower impedance ones. That's a pretty important change for all future revisions. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two from this prototype. And if you're new to hardware, this would make a great first project to stretch your wings. If you're an electronics expert, I hope this process was inspirational for quickly whipping together ideas before you invest all that time de-risking a fully-fledged idea. And let me know if you have any questions or anything else you'd like me to cover.